Hey, Fitzy here, back out again with another one. Look, she has an engine and a transmission mounted into her frame. I went and made homemade motor mounts. I bought a mid plate, an engine mid plate, and installed that, had to modify it. And I also made a homemade transmission cross member. So I'm going to go over all that there now and uh, show you what I run into. So stick around. So let the fun begin. Here I am now, the body's all in primer. Uh, that was in the last video. What I'm going to do first is uh, I'm going to mount the motor and transmission in this car. There's a lot of stuff I gotta do with this car, fabrication wise. Uh, I got to put a roll cage in it, and I gotta mount the motor and transmission. I gotta run the front chassis section out the front so I can mount all the front sheet metal. I gotta figure out where my turbo is gonna go. Uh, I gotta figure out my hot side and I gotta figure out the cold side and uh, basically the dump or whatever I'm gonna put on it. Uh, make crane transmission mounts, motor mounts. Uh, I got a mid plate here to put in it. So all that gotta be figured out. I, that's where I'm gonna start with this now. There's a lot of stuff to be done, but I need the motor and transmission figured out where that's gonna go and get that mounted before it gets any fire. But now I got a bunch of stuff over here in the corner. I have to haul a bunch of stuff down from upstairs. I want to gather it all out here and I'll lay it on the floor and explain to you what I'm doing. So I got everything hauled out. Now, what I got here now and I'm putting this car is a 4.8 LS, okay? Uh, why I'm doing a 4.8 is because I got a lot of them, okay? Um, I have a number of them and there was something that I just tripped over and you can make good power with them. I got a few here in the corner. One, two, three, four there. There's another one up the shed and there's one here, okay? Uh, this one here I'm using as a dummy block for now, just for fitment, uh, for making motor mounts and getting the mid plate and all that figured out. Uh, there's my mid plate, right there. I got that through Bears Performance. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff from them for performance stuff. As a Canadian company, if you want to look it up. Uh, they deal in uh, drag racing and performance parts. And they got a lot of good gear. Probably some of the best prices we can get in Canada come from Bears. Uh, okay, I'm running a these engines all these engines are out of trucks. Okay uh, The trucks have different water pumps and they have different lower pulleys alternator locations and base pans Okay, what I have right here. This is all off like an F body. Okay, it's an F body water pump alternator bracket for the lower mount uh, The smaller pulley because it's mounted closer to block and then F body base pan I put all that on it because I need that for the intake the LS2 intake over here, that's it there. It's and that's the reason why you got to run all the water pump and everything because the water jacket on a truck comes straight up here uh, for the upper hose, and the uh, the F body one comes out from the side. So that's the intake. It's an LS2 intake. That's what I'll be running. Right here, I got a Turbo 400 Chevy. It was all rebuilt with shift kit in. I'm just going to run that for now. I got to pick up a converter for it. I haven't got a converter for this car yet. I haven't got a converter, and I haven't got the Holly Terminator X shit and a drive shaft. And drive shaft will be coming from beers, I'd say. So um, <clears throat> I just gotta get the measurements and then order that up. But the whole plan is here now is I gotta mock this up and get my heights and everything. I want to have the motor set up in it. It's a bit odd because you would think I'm gonna run a motor plate because I'm running the mid plate. I'm running the mid plate for the simple reason um, I want to be able to take the transmission out of the car, take the motor out of the car without both of us. Uh, getting interfered, having to tie stuff up and whatnot. It's good to have. Uh, I can't run a motor plate up front I, between the alternator and all that type of stuff. I want to run this as a street car, so I'm having all the water pumps and alternators and all that type of system on this car, so I'm building it for that. Uh, I want to uh, use the motor plate because that way I can set it up in the middle here, have a part of the firewall or the roll cage or something back here. That way I can pull the motor and the transmission got haven't got to move, or I can pull the transmission and the motor haven't got to move. So it's is that also gives a lot more strength to the sit to the entire car, squares everything up nice. So I'm gonna be running standard style solid mounts off the factory locations. Right here is what I'm gonna do, and they're gonna be running down to the frame rails here. 
that's the plan for that and then it's just a standard cross member for the transmission going across here we'll get to all that what i got to do now is i got to take all this here get this motor all mocked up i got some bolts and everything here i gotta put up I just basically bolt these pieces on this block just for now so i can get a, an idea of where everything is going and uh, get it all flipped over and get it fitting in place well there it is laid in place uh, i got it mocked up there i got a piece of two by three laid underneath the pan there and it's laid on two six by six blocks on the floor there on the bottom of the pan and i just centered it up and i played around with it moved it forward and backward and left and right and trying to decide on things now i got to sit down now and think about this i got to what I got to do is I actually got to build every bit of this car in my head now. Okay, I'm going to have to build the firewall, figure out issues with that, motor mounts, steering column, rack position, base pan position. I got it set up now that this is the lowest point on the car, okay? The base pan is above that. I was looking into running a truck base pan because you can put more oil in it. The problem with this is four inches deeper. That's what I'm, I got to research that. I'm pretty sure it's three and a half, four inches deeper. Up here now, I got about three inches. I'm hoping later on to put a larger intake on this. And I'd like to have a bit more room up here to put an intake. Uh, down here on the bottom, uh, if I had to raise the motor up for the pan, because I don't want the pan hanging down below the cross members, the, the base of the car, the bottom of the car. Because the problem you're going to run into is that if you get into a situation if it happens to wheelie, if it ever wheelies, and it comes down hard, you'll end up beating the bottom off it. Even on a on a road, you hit a pothole or anything like that, the base pan will be the lowest point, right? I don't like having that. I like to have it so that if it ever bottoms out, it'll bottom out on the rockers or on the suspension or something on them lines. It won't bottom out on the base pans. Hopefully, okay? Uh, got to sit down and figure things out here. Um, go, go go over everything here. I'm going to have to, got the fenders down, the rad support. I got to mount all the front of this up now and size up where a radiator and intercooler, all that's going to go. Get that all figured out where all my plumbing is going to go for the hot side, for the manifolds, what I'm going to run for manifolds. I have plans of making my own log manifolds that will come out here and turn down and go down this way. That's the plan with them because on a turbo application, everything goes forward and my turbo is going over here somewhere. So that is the plan. So I just got to sit on this now, size everything up, think about everything, put all the front together and uh, see what I come up with and decide. Well, the last time that grill was in that car was when I scrapped it. <laughs> but I got all the front put on it. I got the red support plate laid in place. I got all the bolts bolted onto the fender back here. Everything tightened up, so that's where she'd be. And the red support bolts. I left the front of the red support there, so I can actually bolt on here. Uh, the front of the fender's gone here. I had to clamp it on there. And, of course, she's bolted on down here and up here. Then I laid the radiator or the grill in place. And I got that mounted where it's got to go. And I sized the power mounts on to see what I can remove from this. I would like to remain the top of it. I like to keep the top of it here, okay? Uh, for a simple reason that um, it just looks a lot nicer. I don't want to have big old pieces of square stock going across the front of that there, okay? So I've been sizing things up here. Uh, the intercooler can fit in underneath this here, but it's going to stick out a small bit. Then there's a radiator, and then I need fans. So I am a bit tight here, okay? Been sizing things up. I was going to raise it up, like I was talking about raising it up for the other pan, but I don't think it's going to uh, give me much uh, clearance, okay? And the front side of the hood. If I raise it up, I'm going to run into troubles, okay? So I'm going to leave the engine where it was to there now. That's what my game plan is. One thing I got to do and I had problems with is if you look down here, you can see the alternator. There is the plug for the alternator is very, very close to this here. And back down here, you can see the, the power wire. It's pretty well right in line with the... Uh, the frame rail hat that goes on the front here what i'm going to do i'm going to pop the alternator off and i'm going to clock the back of the alternator so that the plug is pointed down and this here will move inside so that way i can move you can see this distance here i want to move the motor back that much i had plans of leaving it forward a bit and having it out a bit here but i'm looking at the distance that i got here i would like to have as much as i possibly can uh, i got to deal with a rack opinion down here um hot side going across from one side to the other a turbo over there 
which is not a big issue. It's just that I'm looking at the intercooler and radiator and a, and a set of fans of some sort. This here sticks off a bit, a strange. I don't know why, because that's a truck pulley on the bottom. This pulley here is the F body. So that's how much I got to change that pulley out and the other pulley will bring it in that much. So this here all sticks off the front of it. Why? I don't know. Okay. Be nice that all of this was gone on the front of it. Be nice to take all that off and have that much more room on the front of it. But hey, it is what it is. I could probably put two fans side by side. That way the middle, the fan will actually fit out here a bit more on both sides if I got to. Right? We'll size that up. But I think the first thing I'm going to have to do is get this alternator straightened away and clock that back or get that clock so i can move the motor back another looks to be about another inch and a half i can move it back and you just give me some enough clearance on that there so the alternator is not touching the frame and get this front rad support all cleaved off get everything off it that i don't need so i can actually start fitting in the other bits and pieces i think what i'm going to have to do here now is i'm going to have to go upstairs and get the radiator and the intercooler and start sizing that up the key with this is every time you go building this stuff you've got to mock everything up fit everything and see where things are going don't just go jump into it and start building things you've got to think four or five steps ahead this is not like sheet metal work where you're just doing a bit at a time and stuff like that you have a lot of things that you've got to deal with here okay so i gotta put a uh, a gallon of material in a quart jug is what i got to do here so i'm going to go upstairs i'm going to take the front off of this get everything limbed off get the alternator straightened away so and move the engine back where it's going to be and size up and get the radiator down and the intercooler and see what that's like that'll be my next one so i've been busy i went upstairs and i got the air to air cooler and i got the radiator as well okay and i'm totally amazed at this i went and took the rad support and i cut a section out of the rad I'll cut all this section out of here because I don't need it. I still got to trim out some more because you can see down here. Uh, there's a little bit of room here. I won't need all that, so I'll just trim that back. Uh, sizing things up. I just got this mocked up here. Uh, where it's all going to go. I'm very pleased with it. You can see that it fits in behind the grill. And it also fits behind the red sport. And the radiator fits like where it should be in the stock location. There's all the room I got there now. Okay, I still got room for a fan. Uh, I got the motor moved back before as you can see right here uh, I'm pretty close to the end here now. This was a head to about here somewhere, okay? And what I got done is I got the motor moved back now the reason why I couldn't move the motor back was because of this over here On the alternator, okay, the alternator got this stud on the back and I got this plug, okay? Right here I got this plug this plug was right here and this stud was right here what I did is I let go of the bolts. This is just a junk alternator. I took the bolts out. I cracked a few of them off. Trying to get the part all seized up. But I managed to I had to split them through there. It's a little trick for taking them apart. And uh, I'm bolting them. So uh, I took it apart. And all I did is I took this here. And I just clocked it. The four holes were in. And I just clocked it in one hole like that. So that way it went from there to here. So now this has gone from here to here. Alright. So now this here should bolt on. Before with the plug here, I couldn't move it back because the control arm was right here and it would interfere with plugging it in. Now it plugs in from the bottom side. So now I'm going to go over and test fit this on the car and see where it's to and uh, size up, make sure I still got enough clearances. So now you can see what I'm up against. You can see the stud down there now. It's all clear and everything. The plug is down here. I should be able to get at it down on the bottom here and plug it in. But uh, I got, still has a little bit of distance here. If I want to move it back more, I can. But I don't think I'm going to bother. I have lots of room here, okay, for fans, if I want to put a fan in it. And one other thing that I want to do, I'll show it on this side over here. Because I moved the motor back, down here now the base pan is, it starts right here, okay? Focus, focus starts right here. And all this here is an over full inch here with this here. And the rack was going to mount here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off and put a new section in there and move it back. Reasoning for that is, is because I want to move the rack back tighter. And that, that, what that will give me is the angle going up the steering column. It just moves it back more and it goes underneath the alternator better. Okay. Right now, over here, uh, where I got the motor moved back, the distance for the uh, alternator is going to be tight on the bottom of this alternator. If you looked in through here. Okay. 
if you look down through there that's where it'll go by moving it back it gives me more room to run the the column basically right here okay this little spot here that's where the column will be coming up through so i'm going to move that back and do that section there leave all that worse too but the first thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to mount the motor i'm going to make up motor mounts mount of this is the first thing i'm going to do is mount this plate figure out where that's going to go and mount that on the back of the motor cut it and fit it and get that in place and then i'll go ahead and start building mounts um my whole idea about mounts i'm just going to run off the factory plating system off the side I want to have something that falls into place very simply and I can slide it back and forth and it'll bolt straight down this way on top of the rail but I got access to a column underneath it okay I have a few ideas in my head I'll go over that when I get to it um, but it should work I just want to make alignment and installing the motor because when you're building race cars or anything that is going to be involved racing or drag racing and stuff like that, you always got to keep in the back of your mind is how I'm going to take this apart. You like to have it so that it's easy to take apart, it's easy to put together, okay? Because it's going to break. Somewhere along the lines, you start abusing it, it's going to break. You're going to have to replace stuff. I'm dealing with used parts, so stuff's going to break. So I'm going to turn around and build the motor and have it set up so that the motor just falls in there right easy. It lines up very easy. I haven't got to go fooling around and jiggling stuff around trying to put bolts through it. It should just lay in place, slide it back, and bolt it in place. That's the idea I got in my head. It's going to be solid mounted, no rubber mounts. Uh, permanently bolted to the frame. Here and back here as well. The transmission will be on a rubber mount. That will be another separate uh, cross member. So I'm going to go ahead now. I got everything figured out. I'm happy where everything is too. Where the, the, this is roughly going to go. The chassis rail is going to come out. It's just a piece of uh, tubing that's going to come out here and it's going to pass right along the side of this here and pass out to the front of it. The lower core here, this is going to be raised up and the pipe is going to come out through here. And then, then I'll just make a nice long piece that'll come out to about here. I'm going to run, mount my bumper off of that. I'm going to mount the bracket for the radiator off it and for the uh, ear to ear unit. I'll mount all that off of that. I'll get into that when it gets to it. But I got everything sized up where everything's going to go and how things are going to fit. Then I can blow this apart now and I can start mounting the engine right there where it's to there now. Make sure that it's level and square and in the middle of it and all that type of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead now, strip this all apart and start mounting that. So I got everything limbed off it. First thing I went and did is I jacked up the car and put it on four stands so it wouldn't move. I level up the frame rail so the frame rail is level here, okay? And uh, all along here, and then I made sure it's level this way here. So the car is level, sat here on the floor here now. Uh, you put a level across it, and the bubble's in the middle. Uh, what I went and did then is I mounted the motor. I set it up to where I thought it wanted it to be, and I leveled it up this way, and I leveled it up this way. I'm having mine level in the car to the frame rails in the car. Some may drop it down a few degrees in the back, some won't. It all has to do with how you set up your rear end. As long as the center line... Of your rear end and the center line of your crankshaft are parallel you should be fine okay but like if you angle it down this way you would have to angle the rear end up this way here because it had to be parallel by doing it this way here i can have my rear end set up this way okay now that i got that done i got everything figured out my heights the alternator you can see where it's two in reference i centered the engine in the car as well okay using my frame rails i centered it up so straight down in the car it doesn't always have to be centered. Uh, Dodges come factory with the motor. I think it's off an inch and a half, inch and three quarters, off center. So it's not critical. Some racers do it for weight transfer or moving it over for clearances for steering columns. Me, I like to have it just centered in the car. It's me, I'm just, I like everything symmetrical. So I got that done. And now what I'm in the process of doing now is figuring out the first piece I'm going to put on is the rear uh, mid plate. Okay, I picked up a mid plate from, for this. And I'm going to have it so that I can take the motor out of it. I can take the transmission out of it. And I'll still have something to hold up either or when it takes it out. So make it, it, for, for me, it just makes it a lot easier to work on the car. It's also a structural piece that will add to the, uh, the strength of the actual suspension in the car and the whole build of the car itself. It makes the engine part of the entire uh, car itself. So I went over here and I took, took a bunch of measurements. I, where I centered it up and you can see we've got a whole bunch of lines drawn on this now This is the center line. These are the bolts the bolts under the back of it uh, This is the frame rail the inside of the frame rail is here. This is the top of the frame rail here 
All I did is I just took a whole bunch of measurements. Now the distance I got from here to the frame rails on both sides are the same. These bolts on both sides are the same. Same location, so I measured off of them so that the, then I'll actually put the crank in the center, okay? What I did then is I just scribed lines around it. I got it all marked out here now. I use these a lot. Uh, it's a lot easier to get an accurate measurement this than it is to use like a measuring tape, okay? Uh, I'll use this here, and half the time I don't even take a measurement. I'll just go over on the car, and I'll measure it off. Like this measurement here that I got here from the top here to the center bolt, I just eyeballed it. I don't even know what the measurement is. I know that when I measure this up here, use these gauges on it, that when I measure between them, the distance here to here was from the top of the frame rail to the center line of the bolt. And all I did then is I just drew this line here. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead now, get this cut out and trimmed up so that it'll actually bolt onto the back of the motor. So let's get that done. So there it is with the first fit. Come out really nice. I could rest it on top of the rails. So now I know that it's level. I level it across here. Everything is level. So the, uh, and I actually bolted it onto the motor itself. I use spacers on it. And so I'll simulate the transmission thickness. What I need to do now is I've got to make a, a mount for here and down the sides here where I can actually bolt the plate into the car and the plates will be welded on here. So I don't know if I'm going to use like a quarter inch plate, little strips of it and then tap it or I'm going to take a 1 8 plate and put a bolt behind it. I don't know yet. I'm going to size that up. So I have to go through my bin of scrap and see what I got here. But I'm going to make a mount here and a mount here and then a mount down bottom. Over here, the reason why I'm doing that, I'm just trying to keep it symmetrical on both sides again. Over here, I got the starter, so I can only put a bolt down here. Like, it would have been nice to have a bolt here somewhere. Now, this is missing, but I'm not going to fool with it, right? So I'm going to put a bolt down here and then two up here. That way, I haven't got to interfere with the starter. And the plating system will just go this way, like this here. And I'll have three bolts on either side that'll hold that into the chassis. So I'm going to go ahead now and try to dream up something for that and make up something for that. This is all I made it out of. I went and cut a section out of it and trimmed it up to get this piece out of it and then I rounded out the edges and everything. I'm here now, got it marked out. Uh, you can see it here now. I got the two engine mounts that I'm going to make for this here. I'm going to make it on this as well. The re uh, one of the main reasons why I like to do this side of the quarter is I'm going to cut it down and try to lighten it up as I possibly can, but it's not going to flex as much. I intend to have this like a pedestal style mount. I'll show you when it gets to it. And all I'm having is making two plates that'll bolt to the side of the engine and, and then there's going to be a single pedestal coming off it that's going to be welded to the frame. I'm having this engine solid mounted, okay? The back is mounted, so the front has got to be mounted too. And I'm running off the factory mounts here. I'm going to have sort of bolts onto the block here and as well into the frame here. i got to make sure i got no clearance issues for pulling the motor out and laying it in place. I'm trying to simplify this so that down the road, when, not if, when I blows up an engine... I'd be able to get down or let go of four bolts here, let go of the back bolts here, and pull the motor right out of the car. When it goes to lay it in place, it'll only have one place it'll go. It'll fall right in there, line it up on the transmission, and it'll lay down and just bolt in them four bolts there. I'm just trying to simplify this so that it makes it a lot easier to take it apart. So I'm going to go ahead now and cut them two plates out there for them mounts and get them fit and drilled and whatnot. I'm going to see if I can pretty them up a bit. And uh, have them so that they bolt sander, get that ready. I'm not going to weld them on yet because I got to take the mid plate off. I'm going to weld that on first, but I want to set all that up and uh, check it. Also, I do have clearance for the transmission. I was concerned about that. The transmission is was narrower than in between them two plates, so that is fine. So everything is good. So I'm going to go ahead now, make them two plates, and get this all ready to put together. Okay, I got them all cut out as you can see and then I marked them and drilled them. All I had was I just made up these quick little templates. That's just to get the width of them this way. And that one there was the market. I had this made first and the holes were too big. But that was the center lines there that I used. So I just used them to punch it. And I just uh, made smaller holes here and double checked it. So I had that one for lengthways and that one for this one here. So I used that to make the template and drill the holes bolted it on the motor that's made i was going to get fancy with these and cut the centers out of them stuff like that 
But when I got to layer the motor in this, I'm gonna want it to slide back and I'm not gonna put no interference in there. So this can actually, when this falls in place, it'll lay here, it'll slide back on the plate itself. So that way it'll line itself up easily. Uh, I was gonna cut it up, just try to make it a little bit lighter. I was gonna cut the top out of it and the sides and it's just a pile of work. I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna round the edges off on it and that's it. All right, I went ahead then and I turned around and uh, tack welded the plates back here in place so they're permanently mounted just so I can go ahead and drill and tap them, have that done. So then when I bolt them on, I can bring them back in here and uh, it'll be in the same location. That's the reason why I welded them on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that mid plate out and bring it over the bench and drill and tap uh, the holes for uh, that to bolt on. So I got the plate taken off and you can see I got them welded in place here. That way I know exactly where they got to be on the frame rail so they're already set up. And what I want to do now is drill a few holes here to uh, that I can actually bolt the plate to the car when I, after this is welded on. Now over here I marked it before I took it off. This is the engine block coming down here. This is the reason why I can't put no bolts in here and how tight it is up here. Over here is the same thing. This is the engine block over here. Over here we had to deal with the start motor. So that was all the start motor body. So I can put a bolt down here, a bolt here, and a bolt here. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead now and mark out a few spots. Drill a few spots here and one here. And I have three bolts. And that's what will bolt it together. I'll drill and tap out the steel on the back. And then I can go ahead then and bolt it together. Fit it in the car and weld that bracket in place. So I got them all drilled and tapped. 
all six of them. Uh, all I did is I went through them first with a 1 8 drill bit. I always find it easier going through with bigger bits after the 1 8 goes through, and the 1 8 I always find is the easiest one to go through. So after then you got a pilot hole, and sometimes if you got to take parts apart, you already got something marked out. I use that on the mounts as well. But I went through a 1 8 first, then I went through with a 5 16 and then a 3 8 tap. And now that I got that done, I'm going to drill the outside ones up the next size again. Uh, I'll probably drill them to 3 8 or, uh, you know, drill them right out. 3 8, so there's a bit of play there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove these here. I went and marked it down here, so I'm going to trim this up a bit more on that inside bracket. Around the starter, just so it looks nicer. And I'm going to clean all them up. Go dig up some bolts and bolt that onto that. Where it's supposed to go. And then uh, fit it back in the car. And then weld them brackets on. So I got them all cleaned up and bolted back on again. Okay, that's their home. All I went and did is I went through my bolt bin and I found old header bolts. They're 3 8 with a 7 16 head on them. So I'm going to throw them in there for now. Uh, you know, like you reuse and stuff. And they're nice and small, so that if there's any interference with them or hard to get a socket with like a 9 16, it's nice to have a smaller head on them, right? So I turned around and got to use them up. So I'm going to take this now and reinstall it back in the car. So I went in, I got the motor all leveled up and squared up again and put it in place where I wanted it to. I took a pile of measurements. I took measurements from here to the back of the car. I even took bolt measurements from here on the body. I'll show you this. This is pretty cool. From here, from this point here, back to this point here, this bolt hole here, and they're the same on both sides. Okay? It's quite interesting, right? Considering that, that tells you how centered the motor I got in it. So I went ahead then and I went and welded them brackets on. As you can see, I got them welded on. So now I moved up to the motor mounts. What I went and did over here, as I turned around, I cleaned them up and got them ready to install. All I did is I cut the four corners off them and rounded them out. And then I beveled the edges here. If you look at it, you can see it's beveled. You see I went and chafed back the ends of, the, of it so it's not sharp. One thing I find when working on cars is that when you just cut metal off raw, uh, it's the very place you're going to end up uh, cutting your hands on it, okay? So I try to keep everything smooth as I can so that if you, you know, the only thing you'll get out of it is a bruise if you bang your hand off it, you won't chop the hand off yourself, so. I got them there down there now, I got them cleaned up, ready to go, so I'm going to go and install them back on the engine. So there the air bolted onto the engine. Now the idea I got in my head now is I want to run a piece of pipe from here out to the frame rail. Now most times when you're at this here, and get out of the light, you'd be running the plate out to here and running to the side of it. I would like to incorporate into both sides of it. I like to take the top in and the side, so that way it's got a bit of strength pulling on it. So it's not just pulling on the side of the panel or on the top of it, right? It'll grab the bolt of it and be welded along the top here and down to the side here, and that's how it'll go up to the mount there, right? So the problem you got is how do you go about making something like this, okay? You got a piece of pipe that's got these angles down here, plus I got an angle here, and you got this distance here, and you got to find out the full distance. So let's go figure something out. Okay, this is the pipe I want to use, inch and five eight. What I just did first is I took a, some white cardboard. Yes, I'm making templates. Okay, and I wrapped it around it and got it tight. Okay, I taped it off. Then I took this here off. Hard to do it one hand. And I took that off that there, okay, and I went over and I fit it on the car and I cut it and I trimmed it and I cut it and I trimmed it. And I ended up coming out with something like this here, okay, and it wasn't quite right, it didn't fit right. So I went ahead and I made a second one, which is this one here. Now, that fit goes over there, you can take this over here now. And that fits on the rail like the way I want it to and then it slides in underneath there see and that's what I'm after to have something like that so now where this here fits over the pipe all I gotta do is slide it over the pipe and mark it out and cut it out and trim it up okay and then when you do that you end up with something like this very simple by using that there that wraps around that there now and uh, I got all my angles and everything, right? So I can take this now and go over here. And I can fit that in here and slide that across there. And there's my mount. You can see it in there. And the way it fits on there, it wraps around. I'll weld all that solid on there. 
and that'll be it. Now, the neat thing about it is, is that the other side is pretty well the same. It's a little tiny bit shorter, but I think that's because of the rail. When I put this in here, you can see that it's a little bit tight. If you look at it there. So I'm just going to make another one of these now and just trim it up to fit on the edge there. I'll have two of them then. So it's uh, just a simple little cardboard using the cardboard around the pipe. It's a lot easier to shape up a bunch of pieces of this here and you know test fit it and see where you're making mistakes and then go make another one and trim that up. And if you're gonna make two or three of them, that's fine. There's only cardboard, right? But you can get that to fit, then that'll just slide on over the pipe, and then you can just mark it along the pipe there, and then you got a uh, perfect template for it. So I'm gonna go ahead now, get the other one made up. Kind of got ahead of myself. Uh, I laid them in place on the car, tack welded them on. Then after that, I took them off the car and I solid welded them up. I'm gonna do that before I left them on the car, before I welded up this section here. So now I'm gonna clean this up with a slag and that on this here now, clean that up. And then go over and prep the rails and bolt them back on and get them welded onto the chassis. So there they are, laid in place. I'm just gonna weld them on there now. And that'll be done. I hauled the upper control arms off because I wanted uh, the room to get in there, do a nice job welding them. I'm going to have to pull the motor out to weld the bottom side down there. So, but that's no big deal. This side over here. It fits nice, I can guarantee you that. And a nice snug fit. So, and the strength is there. It's the reason why I wanted to take in both of them, right? Because now, it's not like it's just welded down to a flat of one. It's got both of them there. And you could say, you know, it's like it's triangulated. Throw the two pieces of steel, so it gives it more strength when it's welded. So I'm going to go ahead now and get them welded up. There they are, got them all welded in there. You can see the way they're set up there now when you're looking through them. That's the way they're done. A bit of a trick getting them out, getting the motor out. Uh, I had to take the knock sensors out of the block. Here, these two chunks here, there's a chunk here. And two chunks here, that chunk and that chunk, uh, is very tight on the, the mount. I have to pull the engine forward, take the knock sensor out, pull the engine forward of this here, and then lift it up. So it's a combination of putting it in, because uh, because the way this is here, right? It, when the mount goes down, it touches this here on both sides. <laughs> I was going to notch the bottom of the mount here. I was thinking about doing it because I was sizing that up, cutting this this way here. And but I think once I get the combination figured out to put it in there, I should be fine. So I'll slide it in, play with it, and lay it in place there and see how hard it is put in there. But before I go at that, because when I put the motor back in this now, I gotta do transmission amount and all that, and I'll just leave it in there. Uh, I'm gonna straighten this up up front here. You can see where I marked this here. That there is supposed to be the corner now. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut a new piece here. I got to put another piece of seal there. Cut that on a 45, cut that on a 45, and then put a new cross member across there. So I can move that back, and that'll move the rack back, and I'll have that done then. So I got the new piece cut out. I got the piece all set up here now, so I can lay that in place there now. Take a few measurements, make sure it's square. This is the piece I cut out. I wasn't even going to bother trying to save it, but I cut it back. I was close on uh, inch and three quarters for sure. Almost, it's close to, almost two inches. You can look at that because that's a two inch block, so pretty close to two inches that I cut out of it. So I'll move that back, so that's nice. I moves the rack back, which changes the angle of the steering rack, which moves it back in underneath the alternator where it was in the original place when I had the motor, motor move forward, right? So I'm going to go ahead now, get this welded on. As you can see, I went and put a cross brace crosser and tack welded on. I didn't want this to pop open on me, and when I caught it, nothing moved, so that was good. So I'll just get this all welded on here now, and then I can cut that off and get the motor back in it. So, I got the motor and transmission put in place. That's the transmission where it's going to sit. Uh, I got the black wood underneath it. She's holding her own there on the, the mid plate. I just laid that there. It's just a bit of a strain on the back of it, so I didn't want it to be laying down. What I got to do now is I got to make a cross member. Looking at this here, the actual cross member is pretty well the height of the top of the rail 
So it's straightforward. I haven't got to worry about bends or nothing like that. All I'm going to do is I'm going to run a piece of pipe from over here over to this side here. And I'm going to put a plate off it to come off the mount, to bolt it under the mount. And I'll find some way to mount it here on the sides that I can bolt it on and take it off. I like to put it on a ledge. Uh, that way that if the bolts do fall out, the um, cross member won't actually fall out of the rig, right? So just a little bit of support that I want to put in there. So I got a bunch of junk there now. I'm going to show you what I've got an idea in my head. Over here now, I found a piece of pipe. Uh, it's a bit rusty. I'm just going to cut off a new length of it. I have a lot of it over here. I have a lot of it over here on the floor for the roll cage and uh, so I'm just going to cut off a new length of it so I'll have that and I'll use that but I come across these little uh, shackle brackets for a trailer okay all I'm going to do is pretty straightforward I'll make up a little bracket I mount them on the sides of that like so that'll go on there and I'll put a little gusset on them then I'm going to weld that onto the frame and that'll lay on top of that like so and that's the way that'll go and the nut and bolt will go onto that and that'll be welded onto the frame this tab here will be and that will be the actual mount and then I'll just probably run something like this off the back of it to go to the back of the transmission for the hole in the back of it and I'll put a couple of gussets on that not going to get too complicated with it just you know getting fancy or nothing with it I'm just using what I got kicking around here and making it work this way here is pretty straightforward I'm going to just lay the mount up in place drop a couple of nuts and bolts through it tighten it up and it's done okay so I'm going to go ahead and now start cleaning all it up and uh, I'll keep you posted. So here's what I come up with, okay? All I got is a piece of round pipe, I cut it off and I have the two tabs that I'm going to use for the base of it. I got them mounted here on the bench and I got them squared up off the bench, same distance apart here to here. And I went and notched these here, okay? I used the, uh, the welding line on the pipe as the center line, so I measured everything off of that. And, I, and what that does now is that will fit into that there and I'll weld that along there you can see that in there I'll weld that in there and on the other side I'll center that up on that and that'll be welded onto that there the bracket for the uh, the mount that'll just mount here and I'll put some gussets on it after but I got to figure out where it's got to go on it I'll bolt this back on the engine and I'll fit this in the car and then I'll just tack weld it on take it off and brace it all up and do whatever I got to do with it uh, I picked up a couple of pieces, little scrap pieces of angle iron. They're going to be mounted to the frame rail like so. I got a couple of spots for doing plug welds. They will be welded onto the chassis, and the bolts will go down through there and bolt onto that there, and it will rest on top of this here, so it'll have some strength in for it to delay. So, figured I'd just show you that before I went and welded everything up. I'm going to weld this up here now, get this set up, dig up some bolts for that, and fit it in the car, and it'll be another hobble done. So here it is. I went and dug up some nuts and bolts to bolt it all together. You can see how I welded it on. Okay. On both ends. You can see I welded it on the inside as well. Okay. And I welded it around, all the way around the bottom there. So now all that'll do, that'll sit on the vehicle like so. And go in there that way. And that way you got a ledge laid on. So now I just got to lay this in place, put a couple of clamps on it, and find out where this has got to go. This will go here somewhere. Then I can take it off then and I can put a couple of brackets on that there, braces down here, just to give it a bit of strength. And uh, then that'll be ready. I can position this here now so I can weld them on. These here will be welded on. I got a couple of plug welds put in them and then I'll put a couple of beads on the bottom side of it. But they'll be permanently on the car and that will be removable then. So I'm going to go over now and get that all fitting up so I can find out where the mount goes. So there's what I come up with. I bolted it in, I laid it in the car, clamped it onto the rockers, got it at the height I wanted it, slid the mount back on the tack, welded on the two corners. Then I took the mount off, brought it over here on the bench, I made up two little gussets for it. I welded them onto this here and then I grind and dressed it and then I turned around and went ahead and I welded all that around there and on the inside as well. And then I turned around and I had to trim up these outer brackets because they were a little bit long and they were hanging down underneath the car. So I got them trimmed up. So that's basically it now. You see there's a little bit of a tape around it. I also shortened the mount. The mount was too wide here. I was sticking off too much. So then I cut off about three quarters of an inch off it. So now that's ready to put in the car. So all I got to do now is bolt that up there. Line up these two sides and then weld them on. Remove the bracket and then solid weld this bracket on. And the transmission mount is done.
So there it is, all welded in. You see how I welded it in there? All I went and did is I got plug welds on that side over there and both sides and I plug welded there and there and I ran a bead down there and across the bottom on the back side. You can see the bit of welding there. Right, the way it's welded. One along there and along the bottom corner. I've done the same thing over on this side here as well. I got them welded in. Everything's made up there now and she's sitting on her own. Sitting on the mount. There's a bit of a strain there on it. It's good. I, I put a bit, I jacked up on the motor a small bit. When I turned around because I didn't want it floating there and then just bolt that up to it and then there was no strain on it, right? So I wanted some downward force on it. So I jacked it up when I built everything and raised it up smaller. So now when I let it go, it rests on that there. Okay. So that's basically it. There's the uh, mid plate. You see how close it is on the transmission. Some of you might have asked about that. Uh, I had to cut the ears off the transmission, which is typical usually when you're building race cars. Both sides. So there is a bit of clearance there. It's just enough so that worked out fine so we got all that done what I'm gonna do here now is I'm going to uh, jack this down now and get this sitting on our wheels again see what it looks like well now it's been a while since I had this on his wheels rolling around you can see now you can actually look at how far back the motor is with the center of the wheel where's two in reference to everything else you can see the mounts, engine mounts. You can come over here and you can see the clearance on the alternator. Not a lot. The other mount. And you got the mid plate. Right there. And the rear transmission mount. I was expecting this to lower in the back more when I put the weight in it because the way weight goes, it'll just take the whole works of it. But no, the car still sits good. So, I still got some adjustment on the front springs with them springs that I got in it. These are not 100% what I'm going with right yet. I can probably add a leaf if I need to, but I'm still in the third hole up here on the front. So, there's still room for it to work. And then my angle for my transmission from there to there is not too bad. Okay. I wasn't too worried about that too much anyway. I wanted to keep the uh, running of the engine and everything level in the car. I just like it looks a lot better on his level, right? It's not a drastic uh, change in the back here. I got changed the pinion angle. The whole key here, as long as this line here and this line here are parallel, and then you put a few degrees in the, in the rear end because of the leaf spring. So when she launches it and she kicks it down, two of them are parallel, right? Nice little tire tuck in the back of it. I enjoy walking around looking at this now. I haven't seen it now since I primed it all. I, I was sitting on his wheels. Oh. Very pleased with it. Everything's coming along pretty good there now. Down through her. So, next on the agenda for this now is I'm going to have to start doing the roll cage. I got the engine mounted now, so I can start doing the loops and stuff like that. I got an extended chassis out the front here. That's got to come out here in the front as well. I got to figure that out and bend up the pipes for that. Because I'm already sizing it all up because. The radiator, I gotta have a sort of two of these come out and clears the sides of the radiator because the radiator gotta be, go down between the rails. And the problem I got is that the pipe runs off that plating system that I got. So I gotta have the, the rails come back and then kick in a bit on the back end of it before he comes forward. Well, that's no big deal. So it'll be a lot of bending on the go. I won't be putting door bars in it yet. I'm gonna put the main loop in it and then I'll put the two side bars in it here the dash bar and the bars out to the front and possibly the ones going out to the back I don't know if I'm going to put but I'm not going to put the door bars in it yet or the one going across here for the seat because I want to still be able to get in and out of the car I'll do them at a later date they can be done while the car is all together and whatnot so but they're the main ones I'm going to do first the loop and the door bars and stuff like that right and do the bars that comes out here and goes down but I'm pleased with it I'm gonna leave this one here. Got it all mounted up now so we know where everything sits and everything's gonna clear. So, I hope the tips are good and until next time.